Hello and welcome to Release Date Rewind. My name is Mark J. Parker and I am a film lover, filmmaker, film celebrator. And normally this is an audio podcast wherever you get your podcasts on your favorite apps. But thanks to Portland Media Center, you are about to watch the video component of this show where I celebrate movie anniversaries with my friends. Each month, I usually talk about two different movies that I love with different friends, and we talk about the making of the movies, trivia, any fun memories associated with them. So I hope you enjoy, because now it's time to rewind. So the boy and girl are making out, right? When they hear over the radio that this lunatic killer's escaped from an insane asylum. That's not the way it goes. The boy goes for help and the girl stays in the car and she hears this, like, scratching sound. No, he's been decapitated. No, he was gutted with a hook. We're recording and the spirit of Jennifer Love Hewitt is, is yes. living right now between the three of us. What were you going to say, Tom? So I was going to say, I, I can't tell from the email exchanges that we've had so far prior to setting up this recording whether or not you were snarky about Jennifer Love Hewitt, but even though I'm a gay man, she is my like 12 year old crush and I'm still oh, like yeah. a diehard devotee as Mark can tell you. So careful oh, what you say about Jennifer Love Hewitt. <laughs> oh. Now it's so funny because Tom loves love, J Love Hewitt, Jennifer Love Hewitt. And then Kate We're Kit SMG. loves I am SMG, SMG all the way. Girl. So it's so perfect that I have my two scream yes. queens with me on this episode of Release Date Rewind because we have our Jennifer Love Hewitt and our Sarah Michelle Geller people. Yes. I'm in the middle. I love both. I do sway a little more to SMG. But Tom, Obviously. you love SMG as well. Oh, I love it's not her. Like you're, love yeah, her. Yeah. I'm I mean, rooting for a huge we have two. For her. Yeah. Oh, yes. I know, right now, because I need to see her new she's Netflix in movie. New. Yeah. She's in Do Revenge, which I have to see. But then she's doing the new Teen Wolf show, which I'm kind of yep. like. That's what I was cool. That's cool. Of, yeah. I I like that she's you know sticking with the dark. But I'm like Teen Wolf. I feel like we can get you something a little better. But whatever. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But no, I love it's that I have you guys stone. on. Yeah, it's absolutely a stepping stone. Yeah. And then Freddie Prince Jr. has said he's been wanting to do horror again. Ryan Phillippe always pops up. I mean, this cast, luckily, Freddie's going to be like... in a Netflix Christmas movie. Who? Ryan uh, or Freddie? No, Freddie. Uh, SMG oh. just posted the other day. She's like, you know, I love me holiday movies, and I love them even more when my husband is in them. And she That's right. I did see that. Yes. Their love story is an epic oh, love story. I know. I would have never is. thought. Like, like yes. yes. I know. It, it's funny because the two of them, as you guys know, barely, they might say one line to each other in this whole movie, yeah. right? They barely even look at each other. But who would have thought that the two of them would be 20 years later, still going strong? I love it. I'm so, so happy. They are one of my all time. They've too. been one of my all time favorite couples, but it actually just gets better and better that they still are together and that like Sarah Michelle Gellar still loves Selma Blair. And like, yeah. I know they did a little Cruel Intentions reunion not long ago. Like, I just love all the, how these hot, beautiful, awesome actors from like our youth yes. are still so close, you know? They like grew up together. Yeah, like, truly. and so now they're, yeah. But it's so sweet because you know they're genuine. Like not only did they grow up together, but like they obviously still love each other. And they, that was real. We thought yes. they were friends and they were. <laughs> like, yes. Oh, totally. <laughs> yeah. Okay, everyone. So obviously we've started recording. We are chatting about, I know what you did last summer. And I have on the show tonight, Tom Chuba in Connecticut and hey. my buddy Kit Sheehan in LA were yeah. on different, we're all in different states we're on different coasts but my friends happy spooky season happy october happy, happy halloween october. best time of year oh happy, the <laughs> happy halloween kids, get <laughs> kids getting her props i don't Love have it. any more than this i'll me see and I'll tom, out. me and tom are wearing our i know it's scream versus i know shirts oh that we got from this great designer on instagram uh clark that. felix we're wearing your shirt kit is being jennifer love hewitt 2.0 yes. she's got her little cardigan she's got her tank i have right. sweatpants <laughs> on i'm in my you, you really are giving jlh vibes thank yeah. you like a thank you it's just like yeah. i don't know the hair length is perfect for yep. j love yeah thank color yeah. Everything, everything i should have i could have committed to a very stringy bang but like <laughs> 
So my I dad used see. to tease me and call her stringy hair when I was oh, oh, that's like, but it's Shut up. super funny that you said. But that. that's yeah. so funny because that was only in this movie. Normally she had yeah, like the best hair she was ever. Literally so. supposed to be unwashed and depressed. Oh yeah, yes. I'm sure it took a while to make her <laughs> look that you know sleepy. I just love that uh, that see that shot is so iconic. How she just turns around and she's <laughs> glaring at her roommate. Who uh, we'll get into the sequel. We'll get into the yes. at least the first sequel. I haven't seen all always no i don't watch that and i didn't watch the tv show which was apparently god awful for amazon oh. prime one scenes in wonder but i do believe and i want to ask you guys real quick before we get into the real movie do you think her roommate in this original movie who i think her name is like deb or something yes something right deb. do we think that's actually carla that's actually brandy from the sequel we just didn't have brandy in this one or do you think they are two separate no i always thought college? they were two separate people Okay. Yeah. What about you, Kip? But I, I, I always thought they were two separate people, but you raise an interesting point because I always thought that like the, and I'm not, I don't know the executives of this movie, so I don't, but I always <laughs> felt like the executives didn't. They were just like, yeah, her black college friend. Oh, <laughs> like, yes. We're like, yeah, we can get thing. a famous black college friend. Oh, get the right. famous one. Like, yeah. Totally, you know? totally. Like, is, yeah, I think they were just like, well, then whatever name. If you can't call her the same name, then like Carla or something. I don't know. <laughs> <Yeah. God. laughs> yes. Yeah, I'm just like, because, you know, it's watching it, the, this first yeah. one, I'm like, okay, yeah. But then with the sequel with Brandy, I'm like, okay. That was definitely Brandy. It just wasn't Brandy. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I'm on to like, you, execs. Are the <laughs> yeah? Are the execs the ones who are doing it, or are we supposed to think that Jennifer Love Hewitt's character just continually like <laughs> fetishizes the black best friend and is maybe. Like, always for what? Maybe. <laughs> that would be a fact. First of all, Tom, I would never. I would never yeah. accuse even a character she played of doing such a thing. Second yeah. of all, I am sure it's not that well thought out. It is not a social commentary. It's just the executives feeling that way. Totally. I think we all can agree yes. this, these movies do not think it through all the way. So even even the reveal of the killer in this, in this original 1997 film, which we'll get into in a bit, still up until recently kind of was slightly confusing like just the backstory getting it all straight right um with right. like his daughter and like who's who's billy blue and like right so we'll get into that but up until a few years ago yes. i was still like so is does he also go by billy blue oh that's someone else oh that's a up fake until name oh. moments ago i had <laughs> i realized halfway through watching it for like the eighth to tenth time i was like Pro yeah I still don't know what they fucking did that summer. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I did. I know yeah. it's 10 minutes, but like, yeah. and I had, totally. to Google, I had to literally Wikipedia be like, right. And the, okay. Cause he's okay. Perfect. Okay. Yes. Got it. <laughs> but yeah. Like, it's, you know, it's actually kind of complicated. And I feel like the movie does not have like the screen, the typical scream moment where there is a, you know, a full on monologue of like explaining things. They just sort of, yeah say some quick sentences and then they're off running and you're like okay i think i'm following but yeah let's let's keep the mayhem going right so yes. we'll we'll get yes. into all of that <laughs> we are rewinding everyone we are going back to october 17th 1997 when i know what you did last summer came out wide in theaters in the u.s and changed our lives now i saw this in theaters tom did you yep my dad yep. took me on opening night but Kit, you you did. I was I would be... not allowed. Yeah, no. you weren't allowed. Yeah. yeah, I thought it was hell run over. You guys look like no, it was you guys look like death run over twice. Yeah. <laughs> and when I heard, I would like say that to people. <laughs> oh my I god! Heard it and I thought I was so stupid. Oh, yeah, no, I saw it on like USA. Version. I saw it on oh, like did USA. You? While oh my god, the first. dubbing. Oh god. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's funny. Because I even <laughs> showed this at one of my Halloween parties, but that might have been before we knew each other. Kit. Yeah, because I didn't come yeah. till eighth grade. Because you never had a Halloween party. From yeah, eighth grade they were anymore. they were middle school only. They were a lot of work. Yeah. They were a lot of fun, but they were a lot of work. And I was like, you know what? I'm ta I'm 14. I'm tapping out. You guys have your own party. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember one year I showed everyone because we would watch a scary movie, and of course half the people there weren't even allowed. And like I got, yes. I remember my parents got calls and like, why is your son showing us 
whatever. <laughs> just be cool. So we yeah. we watched Scream one year. We watched I know we one year, and then I think we watched Blair Witch Project the next the last year I did it. And then we would go trick or treating in my neighborhood and walk around town, and you know. So anyway, that's but, so cool. Yeah, it was cool, but too much work. I was like, I'm gonna be a guest at someone else's party. So this is what was going on in October 1997. You guys will love this because even though some of us don't love going to the movies anymore, we at least all used to, and I've seen movies in theaters with you both. The average movie ticket price back in October 1997 was $4.59. Oh my God. Can you? Now that was average. So we're all from Jersey. We're Jersey kids. Kit and I, South, Tom, a little bit more North. So we were near the cities. So yeah. I'm sure we didn't, our tickets weren't that cheap at that you know, time. Our tickets were but, probably like six. Yeah, six. I think is, they were probably I, six yeah. or seven. I'm pretty yeah. sure it was like five seventy five or six. And now they're like, oh my god, unbelievable. But oh, can you imagine four fifty nine to see to this be able movie? To rush the Broadway show for twenty. Oh, <laughs> I have to tell you, in Connecticut, they're not that high yet. It depends if you're what what the keep yeah. going. But I'm gonna look. I feel like my yeah, yeah, AMC look it up. is I'm only curious. like twelve dollars. Yeah, I mean, here in, like, Portsmouth and Southern Maine, it's not much. But, but L.A. is like expensive. In, in yeah, in and L.A., LA it's, oh like, God. yeah, it's it's 20 flat. I think it's 18, technically. Oh, but, like, with fees, and if you're getting it, like, a little bit ahead of time, it's, like, $21. Right. And, and then also the popcorn it's, is 100 <laughs> Oh, yeah. The popcorn and, uh, oh, you want a soda? Oh, yeah, okay, just throw bitch. us your wallet. Uh-huh, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but so that was the the average movie price back then on the music side candle in the wind the 1997 re-recording by elton john was the number one song at this time and it was number one for weeks and weeks and weeks this if you guys remember this was the tribute single to princess diana yep yeah. he re-recorded this and global proceeds of the song went towards her charities because she had passed away i think it was in late august early september it was very august close to this right yeah i remember we were like in school and it was like brand, like it was like one of the first days of school, and I remember like the teachers were telling us, and I was like, "Whoa, you know." Wow. So yeah, so he had the number one song for a long time, like two months. Um, other music news: Janet Jackson had just released a week prior. She released her album "The Velvet Rope," which had some hit songs. We go deep, and I loved that album. That was so cool. And <laughs> Everclear, remember Everclear? Yeah. They yes. released their album "So Much for the Afterglow," which had, um, oh my gosh. Um, I now I, you in yes, yeah. yes. I was like, oh, I lost it. Yes, I love that one, song right? Yeah, day. yes, that was one. And then, father of mine, yeah. 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 yes. yeah. so that should jog your memory of what life was like at this time. On the TV side, Dharma and Greg was the hot new sitcom had just premiered. Seinfeld started airing its final season this this month. This fall and was the number one show of course followed by er and do you guys remember it was a, about a week after this movie came out actually it'll be 25 years ago tomorrow as of this recording do you guys remember the kirsten dunst steve gutenberg tv movie the tower of terror which tom was just in disney no yeah i did you guys, write it i did write it <laughs> do you remember it kid i do no. remember it yeah wow you don't, don't remember that tom no i don't oh. think i saw or i must have seen parts it was like disney it made it it was right? it was wonderful world of disney their sunday night weekly movie yes yep and, and I was so that was their halloween disney movie channel fan at the time oh yes too, totally so yeah. yeah yes so this aired on that. abc wonderful for world of, world of Disney. This was their little like Halloween movie, but it was the two of them. And it was a movie all about the Tower of Terror, obviously to promote the ride, but yes. just had to throw that out there. Such a fun little yes, throwback. Yeah, that. I'm sure it's not good, but I loved it. I was like, oh my God, my girl, Kirsten Dunst is yes. on the Tower of Terror. Mom, dad, shut up. I'm watching my movie. Um, <laughs> speaking of movies, other popular movies at this time, and then we'll get into this movie. This came out the same day as The Devil's Advocate. Remember that one with oh, Al Pacino yeah. and Keanu Reeves? It's kind of, and oh, Charlize. Yeah. Charlize. It's kind of like sexy and like raunchy and like a little it like dark. Is. And like yes. it is exactly what the devil would look like. Yes. <laughs> yeah. He does do a good job. Very wealthy, angry white dude. That, <laughs> yes. Like, yeah. You're right. White lawyer. <laughs> yeah. Totally. So yeah. Devil's Advocate, other popular movies, Kiss the Girls. So scary. Do you remember that one? Yep. So scary. That had just Harry come out. That was number Lewis. one. Yes. Oh, yeah. He's so spooky. Good. And Ashley no. Judd. That movie, I might rewatch that again soon because that was freaky. Her name that is Kate. Not Kate, this isn't how it works, Kate. <laughs> That's her name. <laughs> nice. Of course. Yes. I don't know why I brought that up. I have nothing to do with the name. Yeah, Kate. nothing. That's yeah. That's not weird. your name at all. 
That's true. And then also other movies, Seven Years in Tibet with Brad, Bright Blonde Hair, Soul Food, and Boogie Nights had just come out. Those were all very uh, popular movies at this time. Yeah, Dirk Boogie Nights. Diggler. I was Yes, yeah. Dirk Diggler. That <laughs> between life. Boogie Nights and I Know What You Did Last Summer, I'm just gonna put it out there now. I definitely had, you know, a bit of a, an awakening. Mm-hmm. I think we all probably also, did. Like- the timing too it was like prime to be like millennial children totally (laughs) 97 we were 10 tom was maybe 11 because you're a year older tom i think you're you were born in 86 yeah Mm -hmm. so you were 11 so we all were like on the cusp everyone loved those abs yeah oh my god the app between mark Wahlberg and then between ryan and freddie it just the boys were Really, and the girls, the boys and girls, everyone, the boys and girls. Yes, and the boobs so, in this movie, my God. Oh, my God, the, the racks boobs. on these actors. Yeah, they're beautiful. <laughs> beautiful. Amazing performances. <laughs> yeah, I love that. <laughs> so I'm going to throw it over to you both now. This will be fun. I'll start with ladies first. I'll start with Kit. So, Kit, why don't you, in your own words, I'd love to hear from you both, give a brief summary of this film. Of course, we're going to spoil it, but for anyone out there who is cool with being it spoiled, let's just kind of give a little log line, a little brief synopsis. We'll start with Kit. You can start us off, and then I'll pause you, and then I'll throw it over to Tom. This will be like a sort of acting exercise or something. Okay. I don't know, right? <laughs> Wait, should I, are we going to, should I be describing the first half, and then Tom is going to describe the second Ooh. half? Or do we okay, yeah, I, I like that. Like, yeah. yeah. Good, I like I that. Yeah. The second half and I there you to go. <laughs> I know what you did last summer it takes place in a beautiful coastal town on the eastern mid Atlantic shore, mildly yeah. southern shore of North mm. Carolina. Um, and it happened at the, the opening night, the opening of the movie, it's the 4th of July, it's the evening, and it's essentially the happiest times, like the best night of the lives of these four beautiful people who are, who are all children, who are all seniors in high school, um, and who are all ostensibly best friends, even though they are assholes to each other like horrible <laughs> particularly right, my belief yes. Right? yes barry is, is such a jerk yes barry, what is going on at home bud like, no. god damn he is terrible uh uh-huh. he's abusing alcohol um so they have a fun at the height of their lives they're planning um going away for school and acting and all their dreams and the world is their oyster and they have their a fun <laughs> I was trying I was thinking of like an oyster pun of like how do you say that they had a drunken car accident but it has to do with like well, so instead uh, of finding a pearl they find <laughs> it was shell no like, <laughs> something fishy happens when they vehicularly manslaughter <laughs> they get the stuck in the trap I don't know I'm making it worse <laughs> <laughs> they can't get themselves out of this one. They I don't know. They really hiked up their pants to walk in the tide pools here. <laughs> now I'm like describing an oysterman's life. Yeah. This is about yeah. fishermen. Yeah. Uh, but in any event, they have they recklessly they're driving a little drunk. The what the guy who is driving is not drunk, but they are driving while teenagers, which is and I recall Mark we were not safe when we were kids there was a time we passed a cop and you i think it was you and alana were in the back seat of my mom's cabrio yeah sitting on top top pulling a berry drive driving while white the cop did not stop us they was like oh "Oh, you crazy kids we were (laughs) we locked out i remember that night very it's so funny (laughs) i remember that night very well and i was embarrassed i was like oh my god that was a cop and we are not in trouble this is crazy because what are we doing we were we we didn't have anything in our hands but we basically were ryan phillippe on top of that car yes Mm -hmm. yes and um that so there is an accident they think they hit something in the road Mm. it they hope it's a deer. They find a boot, and then we they hit find a boot. A ju- we hit a boot. <laughs> From scary movie. Yes, yes. Yeah, I was I constantly movie. cracking up. The scary movie the entire time. Yes, <laughs> isn't it funny? Real quick, it's just funny how that movie is so 
uh, it just really stands the test of time. It's such a perfect spoof because yes. rewatching the original movies that that movie spoofs, I think of those lines, right? Just, Instantly. Yeah. I literally conflated the part that it will probably be part of Tom's summary, but the part where Sarah Michelle Gellar is like witnessing, I always think it's Shannon Elizabeth, right? Yeah. Yes. Uh, who's yeah like it's like they're killing him and I'm yeah. like, oh my god she's amazing she's yeah <laughs> i forgot about that i know yeah. that's literally i was like wait are they gonna is that the oh no that's uh that's a spoof movie yeah. <laughs> a real movie yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's dead. We can't just leave him here. Oh, tell me, little Miss Prelaw, what's the charge for manslaughter? We make a pact. Right here and now we take the Sar grave. But so they they find they have hit and run a man. They begin to discuss what are we going to do? Jonathan Galecki, before he was yeah. a billionaire, drives down the road and sees them. So they don't know. Someone has maybe seen them. And uh, they're like, we have to dump him because this, that's way better. And he'll be, uh, the tides will take him out. We have to take this to our grave. He's not dead. He grabs Sam Michelle Geller's crown. It's like, bitch. Yeah. And then Ryan Felipe has to dive in, grab the crown. They think that he is dead. They yeah. think we're going to leave this in the summer and our lives are going to be fine. And Tom, um, take us and from there. Perfect. <laughs> Grab it, Tom. Hot potato. Wow. Okay. All right. That those are big shoes to fill. So I'm I'm somebody of few words. So I'm gonna try and um embellish. My... No, you should. I'm. You don't. You're not a man of few much. words. Maybe maybe a little bit more reined in words, but you can talk. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's okay. So um, you know, they go on with their lives the, for the next full year. Um, mm. They go. You know, just Jennifer Love Hewitt's character goes to college. Um, yeah. Freddie Prince Jr.'s character stays in this sleepy little coastal town and he just picks up fishing, which I think is what his father did or something like I that. I think so, yeah. Barry and Helen, who are Ryan Philby and, and Sarah Michelle Geller, they, they attempt to go to college and both of them fail miserably at it. They both end up back mm. in the town as well. So they drifted apart as friends. Um, and then Julie, Jennifer Love Hewitt, starts receiving notes that mm. say, I know what you did last summer. For the last year, four friends have kept a secret. Are you on drugs? No. Well, then what is wrong? I've had a rough year. But not all secrets stay buried. Somebody sent this to me. Oh, my God. Someone knows. I know what you did last summer. Ooh. That, of course, sends her into a tizzy, and she gets in touch with everybody again to say, hey, I think, you know, somebody knows what we did. Um, turns out somebody doesn't know what they did. It's that the guy is still alive um, and he starts hacking them off one by one. And I guess we won't tell who lives or who dies. Oh, yeah, we can. We can spoil whatever you want. Yeah, so got. there's some really, really great death scenes. I yeah. mean, Ryan Phillippe gets the shit hooked out of him. Yeah. I mean, like, the, the sound know. of him getting hooked is like... Oh, yeah. Like, it's and not, I love man, the, it's the just... close-up on his face, right, when that's happening. And it's very... Yep. And she's, like like Kit was saying, she's screaming. <laughs> that's a great... That's a great scene, yeah. Yep, yep. Yes. He gets hacked away while she's at... And she's trying to finish off her duties from winning the, the beauty pageant Queen. the year before. So yeah. tradition is that she has to go and sit... <laughs> This final, this final I pageant know, out of the so Croker ridiculous. pageant, yeah. Yes. And they all have, like, the Croker hats on. Yeah, yeah, yes. they all have those ridiculous hats. Yes. So he gets hacked away while he's trying to protect And by the Helen. way, I love, in that scene, I always have thought, it's so funny, Sarah Michelle Gellar's such sass when he's up there and she has to be on stage and she's looking at the new women, uh, you know, performing for the yes, crowd. And, she's like, and yeah. there's that woman who looks way too old. Baby, Sorry, look but way too old. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Tom knows every song in this movie, by the way. Yes. We watched this together when he was visiting and I was high as a kite and he was making me cackle. He knew not not only every line, every start of every song on the soundtrack. He's he knows every word and I was yes. I was screaming really, with laughter. So of course soundtrack he knows. That comes yes. Yes. So like, like Jennifer, I love you. Yeah, when they're driving to Missy. Oh, so 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 like I oh, forgot yeah. also this whole thing. So oh, like yeah, you know, Helen and Julie try and drive out to this woman Missy Egan, who they yes. think might know some stuff. And she as had a brother, brother, the, 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 
Yeah, right? she, was, she was great. Rest in she, peace. She plays know, this R. crazy R. woman um, who she does a fantastic job. She's like white trash of the white trash. Yeah, she's in um, the sticks. They say, oh, she's in the yeah, sticks. Yep, yep. Yeah, yeah, she, you know, she's she's all like, you know, daddy died a long time ago. Mama, you know, she's in a home. You know, <laughs> um, <laughs> right? That was yeah. good. Yeah, with a bloody knife. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Um, so anyway, so yeah, so, so they're trying to piece together all this stuff and figure out who is, is, um, uh, stalking them. That leads to Helen, um, trying to, Iconic. The, the police try and take her home because she is obviously frazzled and hysterical. Um, and while she's in the cop car, they of course come upon this fisherman. We forgot to mention that the person who's killing him is dressed as in a black slicker outfit yes. with a hook. Come to think of it. You've got a slicker. Slicker, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know. It's so funny well, how they make slicker, Ray right? like the constant suspect. There are no other suspects but Ray, yeah. and I think that's and and that makes sense. And that was fun. Obviously, they wanted, and this was the same screenwriter as Scream. Kevin Williamson, love him. But like, it's funny because they they want us so badly to keep thinking it's Ray, it's Freddie Prince Jr. And it's like no, but then, like, what? But then we that. kind of don't really get to know him that well. We know the other three well. We see them together a lot, especially the girls. But like, how do you describe Ray? It's like he's cute, dark hair. He's a fisherman, and he's yeah. nice. That's he's poor. That's, that's yeah, poor. He's, he's a working he's man, and that's guy. it, you know? So, yeah. yeah, but he has a slicker, and he has a, a, a you know, he works with the fishermen, and he has, like, a, a car, at least in the deleted one of the deleted scenes that they cut, which I'm surprised, because they, like I said, were hitting us over the head that he was a suspect. He has a car yeah. that has, like, a crab on it. Ooh, he's the one that put the body with the crabs, the right? Crab, which I love just, that like, scene. the yeah. crab, I know the crab body yeah, situation. Yeah, yeah. Johnny Galecki with the crab. Oh, poor yeah. Johnny. Yeah, he's I one know. of the people, he which makes more. no sense, by the way. Like, well, they, well, originally he didn't die, but I love his death. Well, oh, it's, we'll oh, talk about the hook right in the, in yeah, the right? And like, like, and they let it linger yeah. for a minute before yeah. then he pulls up. I mean, the first on-screen death, they are not That's, fucking around, everyone. Yeah. Wow. That could have been way more tame, right? But, but it's also uh, random. Like, what does the killer yeah. have against Max? Like, like he wants did he them to know it's not. They're like, oh, God, he's, like, because he's stalking them, right? So he's mm. like, oh, God, damn, they think it's Max. All right, I'm going to have yeah. to kill that kid. And they'll know yeah. it's not him then. <laughs> like... Yeah, I think, I think it just, it's a great shock for later on. You're probably right, kid. I think even though Max is so periphery, and and for a little bit there, we think he is a suspect as well, right? He could be been, doing this, but right? Been, but you know. I think it's all about that reveal of like, she's hearing the noise in her trunk and she opens it. And I mean, those crabs are scary and gross. And yeah. they're going in and out of that mannequin's <laughs> mouth. Yeah, right? And then, but anyway, and then Tom, it's a miracle. It's a miracle that they're gone, gone within three minutes. <laughs> I know. Yeah. And Ryan Phillip, doesn't he say, he's yeah. like, what did the crabs like skitter away with them or yeah. something? And I'm like, that is literally the only explanation. <laughs> yeah. Literally. And they all just like, oh shit, oh shit, we've been caught. Get it, get it out of there. And they all just like ran to the sea with him. Yeah. <laughs> he's after me too. I got a letter. I got run over. Helen gets her hair chopped off. Ah! Julie gets a body in a trunk and you get a letter? That's balance. So so Helen yes. knows Barry's dead. She saw him get killed. She the cop mm -hmm. is trying to take her home. They stumble upon the fisherman. Cop gets it. Um he's oh, not yeah. very bright. And then it leads to what I think is one of the best chase scenes in all of horror history. Right up Absolutely. there with Laurie Strode in Halloween 1978. Yeah. You know, right I'm so glad. That. I'm so glad you brought up Halloween here, Tom. Uh, of course you did, because you love that movie as well, which we all do. But <laughs> yeah. um, you know, we already know from Scream, which came out just ten months prior, that Kevin Williamson loves Halloween, right? Because Halloween is literally in the movie Scream. Yep. And it's funny on our latest rewatch of this, I, I, for the first time, which is funny, I'm, I, I'm, I was a late bloomer to this. I realized that yeah this movie is also such a great love letter to halloween in with the chase and with something else which i can't oh and then of course how the chase she's she can't get in it's basically the same thing as the keys right yes. open the door elsa! you know her, her, her elsa yeah. elsa is tommy is little tommy tommy open the door elsa so like yeah, that whole okay. chase is such a beautiful and 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 a great way longer version of that laurie strode chase scene i totally yeah right 
It's yeah. a um, total homage. And it's so much more elaborate. There's there's going up in a in a dumb waiter. There's falling out. I mean, like it's, and then, yeah, it's like the out perfect the window. Yeah. And yeah. you think she's got it. Oh. You think you're like, oh, she the made tires. it. And then she's in that alleyway and she hears something and she turns around while a parade is going on. I know that uh-huh. damn parade. The fisherman gets her. Somehow he's behind her, which, you know, he's not supernatural, but he almost is. Almost um, is. But yeah, I've ne- I mean, it changed It changed stacks of tires to this day, this yes. movie. Yeah. Right? It, 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 really the, the analogy, stacks of tires, is like the same as seeing the logs on a highway. Oh, Final, Final Destination, Destination 2. 2. Yes. yes. Oh, totally. You're so right. You're like, oh. Yes. Yeah. Thanks so much for watching. Next week will be part two of this discussion. And in the meantime, please follow Release Date Rewind on Instagram.